Now, I know you've already looked at the screen. Yes, you can see a picture there of someone from Frozen. Don't rush me. I have no idea if it's Anna or Elsa. I get the two completely confused, as I've done in previous videos, so I'm just gonna leave it there, all right? I've watched Frozen, yes. Have I memorized all the characters' names? No, I know that there's Sven, and I'm pretty sure I remember the name of the Rudolph. No, the, the dolphin, see, it's not even a dolphin, see, it's a reindeer, what am I talking about? Hi guys, welcome to Negative Numbers, and those of you who are following along with internet land and have access to the Cambridge Essentials textbooks, Yep, this is going to deal with Year 8, Chapter 1, Exercise 1E. Those of you who are fabulously good at mathematics can have a go at those questions with some of the extension questions. If not, great thing about Cambridge is they let you choose the questions that are of the level that you think you can achieve. Wow. Now, as we always do, let's start with a recap. And no, there is no cheesy cap picture this time. I only use that every now and again, like every fourth video. In Year 6, you would have met the idea of negative numbers. Likewise in year seven, if you're watching this at a year eight level, then yes, you would have done it in year seven as well, right? These are numbers which fall below the number zero. Generally, the best way we do this is we use a number line. And if you look, we have zero, smack bang in the middle. Numbers on the right start counting up and are all positive. Now, we don't actually write the positive sign. If we spent my whole life writing plus signs for our positive numbers, we would never get anywhere. And going to the left, the numbers are all negative. Congratulations. So writing them as a number line is very, very helpful, but most people tend to use them in way of a temperature scale. So again, above zero, one, two, three, four, five. Below zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Now, a lot of people turn around and say, well, why do we need negative numbers? Well, as I say, if we did not have negative numbers, they would never have been able to make that film called Frozen because the word Frozen would have meant absolutely nothing to anybody, right? So, that's awesome. Now, as I say here, the cold doesn't bother me anyway. Yes, it does. I'm British. I'm Australian as well. I'm lucky to be both. But... Um, we're now going to look at the ideas of adding and subtracting negative numbers. Adding and subtracting negative numbers are, uh, is just awesome. It's great. And it's used, as I say, for pretty much all of my videos all the way through. So adding, subtracting negative numbers, here we go. We know how to add positive numbers. If we look at this example here, we know that 5 plus 3 is 8. And because of the great way that mathematics works, we would know that 3 plus 5 is 8. Now, actually, all we've managed to do is swap these two things over. We've just changed. And you're going to say, well, but there was a plus in front of the 3. Why is there no plus in front of the 3? Well, actually, there is. We just don't write it. We don't need to, at the start of a sum for a positive number, add on 3 or just put the plus sign. So 5 plus 3 is the same as swap that to the beginning becomes plus 3, swap that to the end becomes plus 5. And we don't actually need that positive there. Now that actually helps us do negative number questions quite awesomely because we know that so long as we keep this little sign here, the one that's in plus of the 5 and the 3, so the one that's in front of the 5 and the 3, so long as we keep them the same, we can still actually work out our answer. And you're going to say, well, what does that have to do with the price of fish? Nothing, because we're not dealing with fish. Stop talking about fish. Look at this question here. 6 minus 2. That actually is exactly the same, so long as I keep the minus sign with the 2, as minus 2. What's in front of the 6? There's nothing there. Yeah, there is. There's a plus. Plus 6. Wow. Now, 6 minus 2 we know is 4, which would mean that minus 2 plus 6 must also equals 4. And swapping things around can actually make our life much, much easier with negative numbers. If we go back to my number line, minus 6, uh, sorry, 6 minus 2. Here is plus 6. So we're going to do 6 minus 2. Well, there is 6. I'm going to take away 2. That means I'm going to move two spaces down. And as we were expecting, the answer is two, uh, it's 4. But what about minus 2? plus 6. This number here is actually your start number. That's where you're going to start from on your number line. So here is my minus 2. Now when I'm going to add 6, I'm moving 
to the right when I'm adding. And if I just jump the number of spaces, one, two, three, four, five, six, lo and behold, what do I end up with? Once again, it's four. Being able to do negative numbers, and later on we have to times them, just giving you a heads up, um, it is, is really important in mathematics. You've got to be able to add and take away negative numbers. So if I go back to what our next example, if we have, as I say here, minus 3 plus 10, yes, I can try and draw that. I can do my number line and I'm going at minus 3 and I've got to add 10 places and I can do all that hard work there. Or I can just reframe the question. So long as the signs stay together, I can write the plus 10 first and then the minus 3. Again, we don't need to write the plus sign at the beginning. And you're now going to go, well, that's just 10 minus 3, which, yeah, you've been able to do in your head forever, which is 7. Which would mean, then, that minus 3 plus 10 must also be 7. And if you're not sure why, do the number line. If I start at minus 3 and I add on 7 places, uh, sorry, 10 places, I will end up at 7. I can guarantee you I will end up at 7. So that actually is really, really important. But what about when both numbers are negative? A lot of people go, well, that doesn't necessarily help me. So as I say, if we've got minus 3, minus 6, well, swapping them over so to get minus 6, minus 3 doesn't actually make the sum any easier. But this is where you sort of then have to start moving your brain around. Minus 6 is my start number. So I'm going to start at minus 6. So here's my number line. There's zero, we're going to do minus six. I then want to take away three from it. That means I'm going to move further away from zero. That minus sign basically says move further away from where you started, all right? Or move further away from zero. Now minus, as far as I'm concerned, when you move minus, you always move that way. And when you move plus, you always move that way. So I'm at minus six, and I'm going to take away another three. What does it become? Oh, yes, minus nine. Now, if you're not sure, draw the number line. Do lots and lots of these practicing. Would it have made any difference if I'd stuck with my original question? No. This one, remember, originally started and said start at minus 3 and then take away 6. So in this case, I'm starting at minus 3 and I'm going to take away 6. So I'm going to get more cold. I'm going to get more negative. So minus 3, I even do in my fingers, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, minus 9. Same answer, minus 9. Now, funny enough, uh, the girls I was teaching just uh, recently basically turned around and said, well, hold on a moment. If you were to do 3 plus 6, you'd get 9. So can we just do that and put a minus sign in front of it? And I went, oh, shortcuts. Hate shortcuts. Look, yeah, it works. But, oh, shortcuts hate shortcuts because they only work in very specific instances so what c confuses people the most well pretty much maths but otherwise taking a big number away from a small number this example here three minus eight we could move it around and say well let's put minus eight plus three i don't necessarily think that makes it any easier but again just think of the fact that you are at three Assuming that's my 0 and here is my 3. This minus sign tells me I've got to move down and I'm going to move down past 0. I've got to move 8 places. Well, I think to myself, if I'm moving 8 places, then to get to 0, that's already 3 of those 8 places. So to get to 0, I've got to move 3 places. How many places in total am I moving? 8. But I've already used 3 of them. So how many have I got left? 5. So that must mean that actually I've got to move five places lower than zero, which is minus five. And that's breaking things up. Another example, minus six, sorry, let's do plus six, minus 12. Quick number line, there is zero. Where am I starting? I'm at six. I've got to move 12 places down. So to get from six to zero, I'm moving six of those 12 places. How many do I have left? Well, another six which would mean I'd have to move six places below zero, which would then give me minus six. Lots and lots of different ways. I could have done minus 12 plus six, exactly the same sum, remember. This time, there is my zero, there is minus 12 
plus sixing means we're going to get six places closer to zero, which would put me at minus six. I actually think I prefer to use this number line here. Now, again, you don't have to do all of this in your head. Please stop thinking you have to do all this in your head. You don't. You just do it the best way that works. And for me, pencil and paper works until you start getting used to this. And I promise you, at some point soon, we're doing lots of these questions, you will actually get faster and faster and faster. You'll see those tips and tricks. You'll know the best way of doing it. But how's the best way to practice? Well, remember, you've got to do this stuff at least 20 times to put it into your long-term memory. And so, yo oh yeah, let's do some questions. Over to you. Have a go at the questions that are written there. Those of you in internet land, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully it's made sense. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much for joining us for that video. It was really good having you. Now, if you'd like to know when the next video is coming, why not click on subscribe? Alternatively, head on over to mathsguru.com where you can watch all of the videos on its own dedicated website. While otherwise, watch the video that's just popped up. It'll be part of this series. All right, take care. See you again soon.